Hey to YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here, I'll be taking you guys through the prep, masking and paintwork on this Volvo XC60. The name of the color is Black Sapphire and the color code for that is 452. So I'm going to be using Standox solvent based paint as I usually do these days. So obviously first up I'm going over all these panels giving them a thorough clean down before I do start my prep work as you guys are probably fairly familiar with from other videos. And I was just using a mixture of methylated spirits and water to clean those panels down and a clean rag. Now first up you can see me using a razor blade to remove some of the fine filler that has been placed into the pinholes. I actually didn't apply that filler myself, it was one of the other guys, so sometimes when we're mixing filler up, we'll have a look at the other primer jobs, and uh, if there's any pinholes, we'll just pick them up at the same time, save a bit of time, and also a bit of material from going to waste. So, next step is to go around and mask up all the surrounding areas so that I'm not going to damage them when I do my prep work. So once that's all done, I've got the block out and I've got some 180 grit on this. You can go anywhere sort of from 320 to 180 grit when you're blocking your primer. Um, obviously the primer work had already been done for the purpose of this video, but I do have other videos where I go through the primer work if you'd like to go and check them out. But yeah, these days I like to use 180 grit on my primer work. Uh, back in the day I always used to use 240, but I've just found that 180 grit will yeah just block through those highs and lows a little bit quicker. Um, and also just more chance of getting it straight, getting that panel to be straight. Um, depending on how good the repair is, uh, will depend on what grade paper I use. You know, if it's uh, been finished off really well, sometimes I don't even need to block it, or you can even just go with like a light block with 600 grit or something like that, and then finish it off with 800, and then you're right to paint over it. Um, but yeah, for this, uh, this instance, I'll be using 180 grit, but you do have to be careful that all those 180 grit scratches, they need to come out before you paint over it. As it turned out in this one, I did have a few cut throughs, um, just while I was blocking and around the primed areas. So what I ended up doing was going in the booth and putting some wet on wet primer over the entire primed section just to help seal it down. Um, what you see me doing here, I've actually got a bit of a curved block there and that's gonna get into that uh, angle a little bit better than that flat block. I blocked what I could with the flat block, but then um, get that curved block just to sort of finish it off. And I'm actually only using 320 grit on that at this point. I had a guy being a bit of a dick on one of my videos telling me off for not using a vacuum cleaner when I was doing my block work. Turns out we don't actually have a proper connection to go onto our uh, sanding blocks anyway. And he's saying basically that I would get my ass handed to me if I worked in his shop and I did that. And look, at the end of the day, man, I wouldn't do that if I worked in your shop by the sounds of it, you know. You have to fit into the shop that you're working in. If I just, um, and he's saying, oh, you should have done the primer work inside the spray booth. If I started doing primer work inside the spray booth at this shop, man, I would get my ass handed to me. So don't come onto my site and tell me that everything that applies in your shop applies in my shop. Get your head out of your ass and realize that every shop is different. There's a good saying here in Australia, fit in or f off, F-I-O. Now at the end of the day, you gotta fit into whatever shop you're working in. Yes, there's a few things that I don't really prefer to do that I have to do in this shop. But all in all, I'm happy here. That's why I stay here. I know there's better shops out there. There's shops with all dust extraction and all the, you know, the top of the line stuff. But this shop here, they let me record. We work on some really nice cars and we've got absolutely everything that I need to get the job done. Sorry about the aggression there, but I think I got the point across that, um, yeah, you really have to fit into the shop. And you know what? I fit in in just about every single, well, I'm yet to find a shop that I don't fit into. I think I'm adaptable. And some people do struggle leaving a shop that they've been working in for years. They'll then go to another shop and then they'll be like, wow, I can't match this system very well. Or they're struggling to use the sandpapers or whatever it be, but yeah, I'm, I do apologize about the aggression. I'm not usually like that and I, I plan not to do it again, but I just wanted to sort of get that point across to you guys, you know? And look, at the end of the day, half the time when I'm doing my prep work, I will um, wear a respirator, wear a proper cartridge respirator. Health and safety and the health and safety of my workmates is important to me. Like I will tell the other guys, like they'll be sanding down and in <laughs> clouds of dust and priming up without a respirator on. And I'm always telling them, dude, put your respirator on or you know, 
grab the vacuum cleaner. You're doing a big panel and there's a lot of dust created. Get the vacuum out, you know? And the way this guy was uh, making out as if I just didn't give a shit about anybody else in the workshop is absolutely the opposite of the kind of person I am. That's why I sort of wanted to get that um, message across with a bit of passion, you know? And look, I don't mind criticism. I don't mind constructive criticism. But when you come at me aggressively, I'm going to hit back. What do you expect someone to do? I could have cut that part out where I got a bit aggressive, but I, I decided to leave it in because I think it really got the point across that it is something that I do care about my health and safety and others health and safety in the workshop um, because look at the end of the day I don't think this trade has to be that bad for you if you take the right steps you know even in a shop like this if you're wearing your respirator if you're wearing gloves when you're painting wearing your coveralls wearing an air fed respirator and all that stuff you know it doesn't have to be the reason you die early you know like my grandpa he was a spray painter panel beater he died at the age of 80 you know i'm actually a third generation spray painter so i do have a bit of history in this trade and i do it because i love it i really enjoy this trade and I don't want it to be the reason I die early, you know, and I don't want it to be the reason my workmates die early either. Okay, now we got that behind us, we can continue on with the job. So, obviously, I blocked the repaired area down or the primed area down with the 180 first. I then went over the top of that with some 320 grit, and then I did my blend areas with 600 on the orbital sander with the soft interface pad on it, and then I've gone around all those edges with a 800 grit soft back sanding sponge now that's just mainly to remove that first layer of orange peel and any little bits of crap that may have uh, sort of accumulated on the paint so what i've been doing these days is actually going 800 and then just scotch bright for those little nooks and crannies that are a little bit tricky out of sand with the 800 grit it um, just speeds the procedure up a little bit and look sometimes if i'm just in a real hurry I will actually skip the 800 grit stage um, by hand and I'll just go straight to grey scotch bright. Just be careful when you're doing the grey scotch bright that you keep that piece of scotchy clean. Uh, when I first started dry sanding, I'd sort of scotch it over my primed areas and then got that same bit of scotchy, scotch it over the blend areas and little bits of dust from that primer, so your light grey primer, would get stuck in the piece of scotch bright. And then when you go and do your blend area where you're only going to be putting colour, you'll actually get a bit of contamination and you can uh, run the risk of clearing over this sort of murky cloudy looking primer dust so something to be extremely careful of and also later on you'll probably note that i always wipe my blend areas down first with wax and grease remover so i will prep sole or wax and grease remove the uh, blend areas first and then i'll go over the primed area so i'm not running the risk of contaminating my blends with primer dust so obviously after the prep work's done i gave it a really good blow off and then i wiped all those edges down and now i'm in the booth and masking up so i'm just going to put some music on for the next three or so minutes um if that doesn't doesn't interest you you can skip up to the 11 minute and 50 second mark and I'll continue to take you guys through the job
something that you don't have to do on most cars, but a lot of the European cars do have a bit of a rubber in between the fender and the door. So in that case, this is all I do to mask it up. You just get a piece of three quarter inch tape or 18 mil tape, put it inside there, then carefully slice the edge of it peel it back and push it in so it's off the edge of the paint. Obviously, always careful with a razor blade that you don't go and slice into the paintwork that you're wanting to go over. Um, now, I'm sure there's gonna be a few people commenting on this video and saying, why did you blend the door? Why did you even paint the door? Um, now, there's a simple reason for that. Now, uh, when they're quoting the jobs, they will sometimes just quote for the worst case scenario, you know, like that guard repair may or the defender repair may have got a little bit bigger depending on how the panel beater went around it um, and how we primed it up as it turned out we did have enough room to blend that uh, fender but I said to the um, the foreman I said hey do you really even want me to blend that door it was already stripped out they'd already been allowed for it um, and he said nah man if we don't paint that and then we get audited uh, then you can get yourself in a bit of trouble by the insurance company so it's just going to be easier just to blend the panel and i'm like yep no worries that's not a drama at all um and it was already stripped out so they didn't want to go and knock it off the quote because they then they're down on labor because they've had to remove and refit it that's sort of half the work anyway um so yeah that's the reason that we're blending the color through that door so i've obviously wiped the entire panels down with some wax and grease remover or prep sole more commonly known as around here um, and then I've given it a good tack rag. So I've just got some wet on wet primer in the gun there. You may be wondering why I didn't just use black wet on wet primer and there was a reason for that uh, because you may just be able to see just to the left of screen, just off screen, there was a bumper bar there and um, that was like a mid gray color. So it was more important to get the ground coat correct uh, for that than it was this guard here because this guard was just going black obviously. So you're gonna get coverage within sort of two coats no matter what color you're going over but what you're seeing me do here is just fade that edge of the wet on wet primer down just with a bit of 2k thinner so this is just the standard thinners that we use in our base coats and even in the clear coats um, it's not a specific fade out thinner but it doesn't need to be for this purpose so it literally just makes it so that when you go and put your base coat over the top of it you're not going to have like a bit of a rough fairy edge there so as you can see it's just basically melting the overspray in and you can see that I did get a little bit of overspray up around the top of that fender where I did actually want to blend that color um, now with colors like a lot of the time you might be sort of wondering why are you blending um, into the door but you're not blending into the hood or the bonnet and that's mainly just because um, colors are pretty forgiving when you get them on those sort of an angles like the angle from a fender to a hood uh, or a bonnet is uh, yeah a little bit out and you're never really going to see a big difference in colour there as you would like if I was to go edge to edge with this colour towards that door um, you might see a little bit of a colour difference there but I was happy with my colour anyway as I say I probably didn't even really definitely actually didn't even really need to blend that door but just do it for the hell of it you know it's an extra panel to paint so I won't complain I do like smashing a nice coat of clear on as well so I obviously gave that wet on wet primer about 10 minutes flash off you can see that it's safe for me to tack cloth over now so by the time I'd gone and done the bumper bar gone out got my color ready thinned out put it into the gun with a filter and all that stuff I was right to tack rag and continue on with the black so pretty warm weather over here in Perth at the moment uh, this day was about 35 degrees Celsius so not sure what that converts into Fahrenheit for Americans but um yeah it's a nice warm day so like flash off times are really shortened on these warm days like between these two coats of base coat I, I would have given it like 30 seconds blown a bit of air over it bang solvent base is dry in no time um, and yeah look I'm just using that blend I've got the blend so I may as well use it uh, you know, as I said, I would have been, if I really wanted to on a colour like this, I would have been able to blend into that fender. Like if it was a silver, any day of the week I would have taken that door blend, but darker colours are a little little bit more forgiving on the blend. So I was obviously using the Segola 4600 Extreme, and I've got the DVR Aqua Air Cap on it, and that's a 1.3 setup. It's the digital one, and look, I would not even recommend buying that gun, uh, not because I don't like it, because they're overpriced. Um, I've recently seen them listed, and yeah you're looking at like around 800 australian dollars and like the non-digital is a lot more affordable um but even then they're more expensive than the pro light so i just don't really know if they are worth 
more than the pro lights. That's the honest truth, you know. Um, now that they are out there and listed, like I saw some of those Segola 4500s for like 450 to 500 dollars listed over here in Australia. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I think the pro lights still would have to take out number one spot, especially after seeing how much those Segolas are going for. They're good, but they're not that good. I really think they should look at lowering the price on them. You'd sell more units and you could possibly find that you would even make more money if you lowered the price. And yeah, I have found myself slowly going back to the developers these days and I'm loving every second of it. That Nebula is a beautiful looking gun and TE 21.3 smashes the clear arm beautifully. So that's what I've been using these days for clear coat. Occasionally I'll still break the Segola out, but just sort of loving coming back to my roots. Isn't that just a beautiful looking gun and doesn't that just get a really nice finish? So the clear coat I'm using on this one is the Standox Standard Clear. Um, it's a VOC clear, so you put the VOC hardener in it and that's why I'm doing a just 3070 or tack and whack application. So you just put one coat on, don't even give it any flash off time and then put your next coat on straight away, job done. Um, and yeah, the gloss retention in this clear is really nice. Like before we were using the Standox uh, Crystal Pro Clear and um, using the Duke Zone Clear on some of the, um, you know, the, the lower quality jobs. Um, but these days I'm onto the Standox Standard Clear and yeah, totally loving it. Um, even the boss came in and saw this job. He said, man, that's, um, that's some good clear, you know, so he's pretty happy with it as well. I've actually recently made a couple of videos on my video game collection and I've uploaded that onto my Gunman's World channel. So at the very end here, there'll be a couple of links you'll be able to click on them and check out Gunman's World and go have a look through those videos. And there's not many videos up there, but there's a few you can have a look through. Also, if anyone wants a t-shirt, stubby cooler or a hat or anything like that, you can jump over to my website uh, through that link that you see just there. Now you've seen this video, get out there and paint some shit. Thanks for watching, and this has been another Gunman Production. Goodbye.